All right, so this is the first of um, two videos looking into the last section from chapter five, in which we're really just continuing this idea and delving a little deeper into the connection between equations, and especially graphs um, of linear relations, and quite often using tables in between. And what's hopefully as familiar is that any linear relation can be expressed in this form where the coefficient of x is the average rate of change. We tend to call it the slope after a while, but that tells us how it changes. Um, and it should always be, it's always a constant number. That's what makes it a line. If the change, if it's sped up or slowed down, then it would not make a line. And the constant term um, represents, you know, the fixed cost or the starting point or the y-intercept if you look at a graph. All these things we discussed in some detail before. It was kind of going to delve a little deeper with it. So for each, I have three graphs here. And for each one of these, I want to find an equation in this form. y equals something times x plus some number. So if I look at this equation here, one thing I notice is that the y-intercept is 0. So if I think about an equation in this form, the y-intercept is 0. That means my b value is 0. My constant term is 0. And if you're adding 0 to something, you don't really need to. So at this point, I can just now focus. Oh, I had an m here, so I should put an a just to be consistent. Although in grade 10, we usually use the variable m more often than a. No real reason. Um, so now it's a matter of just what's that coefficient of x? What's the slope? What's the average rate of change? Which sometimes it's a lot more clear to see that average rate of change um, or that rate of change when we see when we write this as a table. So if I just make a, if you're not sure by looking at the graph, fair enough, just make a little table, make a little quick x and y t chart. Look at these points. For example, that point there, the x coordinate is negative two, the y coordinate is six. This point here, the x coordinate is negative 1, the y coordinate is 3. The center point is at 0, 0. And I have 1, comma, negative 3. And this is more than enough, but I'll do one more. Uh, and I have 2, comma, negative 6. So how is making a table of any help? Well, if I look at the table, quite often it makes the slope or the rate of change more clear. Because I can see here, every time x goes up by 1, y goes down by 3. And it's a it's the exact same, and that's what we're always trying to find. We're always trying to find the change as x goes up by 1. How does y change? In this case, y goes down by 3. And that down by 3 is the rate of change. That's the slope. That's my a value. And so my equation, I can see, is y equals negative 3 times x. Now, if you can jump straight from the, sorry, from the graph to the equation, that's great. But this little intermediate step of using the table quite often makes the slope or the average rate of change um, more clear. Because that number should always represent how you know, our output changes as x goes up by 1 each time. But this is what we're looking for. There's my answer right there. There's my equation. All right, let's look at this one. Um, again, the first thing I would do if I want to write an equation in this form is pay attention to my y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. And I can see by here, uh, if I look at the scale of the graph, it is two lines down, but I got to look at the scale. And if I look at the scale here, that must be negative 4, because that's negative 10. So I can tell my y-axis is going in each grid line and going in twos. So that means I already know half my equation. y equals something times x minus 4. Now, it's not wrong for me to say plus minus 4. Like, for example, this is not wrong for me to say at all. Plus negative 4. Right, that's fine, but adding a negative, same as subtracting. So it's a little bit cleaner to just say minus 4. All right, so now, like before, most of our work is finding the rate of change, the a value, the slope, whatever you want to call it. And again, if you can see it from the graph, that's great. But again, I'm going to go to a table just because if you can't see it from the graph, this usually helps. And if I look at these points, for example, that point there, when x is negative 1, because if I look at my x-axis, each grid line does go up in 1, or down by 1, which, whichever way you're looking. The y-coordinate is negative 10. Then when x is 0, y is negative 4. Honestly, that's all I really need to pay attention to, but I'll write one more down. When x is 1, y is positive 2. Look at that point right there. And again, I've got to be careful to always make pay attention to the scale of the graph. In this case, my y-axis is going in 2s, but my x-axis is going in 1s. If I look at the table now, I can see clearly 
x is going up by 1 here. And of course it is, because I chose these values, and I chose to go up by 1 each time. As x goes up by 1 each time, y goes up by 6. Which I can see from the graph as well. As x goes up by 1, y goes up by 6. Like I said, we can figure this out quite often from the graph as well. The table sometimes just makes the numbers more clear. That's it. That plus 6, that it goes up by 6 every time, that is my average rate of change. Every time x goes up by 1, the output goes up by 6. And so that's my slope. That's my a value, whatever you want to call it. And there's my equation, 6x minus 4. And so before we get to the last one again, you don't really need this step here, but it's not long, and it does kind of show this connection quite nicely. Last one. Again, I want an equation in this form. Again, my eyes are first drawn to the y-intercept, which is right there. Now looking at the scale of the graph, I can see this is 2.5, this is 0. So each one of these must be 0 0.5. 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5. So each grid line is 0 0.5, which means, like I've already stated, this must be at exactly 1. So I got half my equation. And all that's left now is my average rate of change. And so if I look here, again, I'm going to make, um, I'll make a table of values here again. And so when x is negative 2, y is 2 by looking at the scale. I already saw when x is 0, y is 1. And when x is positive 2, y is 0. OK, so what is my average rate of change? Well, if I look at the table, which comes from the points that were given on the graph, my you know, x is going up, as x goes up by 2, y goes down by 1. As x go up, goes up by 2, y goes down by 1. OK, so but negative 1 is not my slope. Negative 1 is not my average rate of change. Because I want to think about what happens as x goes up by 1. Well, now I have a little bit of proportional reasoning here. If x goes up by 2 and y goes down by 1, then it follows that if x went up just by 1, which is half as much, y would go down by just half as much. It will go down by half. And that is my slope. That is my average rate of change, which I can also see from the graph here. For example, if I just plotted this point right here, which is at negative 1, and this is at 1.5, I can see that as x goes over by 1, from negative 2 to 1, my y value went down half a unit. Either way, I can now see my equation. So it's negative 1 half times x, which I will say is equivalent. In fact, I'm just going to move my table here. While this answer I have is great, y equals negative 1 half x plus 1, uh, I can write it also like this. Multiplying by half is the same as dividing by 2. So another common way of writing this is to say negative x over 2 plus 1. Those are both equivalent. If one looks nicer to you, fair enough, go with that. You would also have negative 0.5x plus 1. But in general, anytime you're multiplying, multiplying by a half, it's the same as dividing by 2. So if you're multiplying by negative a half, the same as putting a negative in the front and dividing by 2. But like I said, if one seems better than you, go with it. And like I said as well, if the table, the step of me showing the table is not that helpful, um, fair enough, you can bypass it. But it also doesn't take very long. <laughs>